Good morning. I'm out in the shop early and we are working on day two of this collage style quilt. Thanks for joining me. I'm Lisa and today I'm going to walk you through my work day as we start to sew together this quilt top. Let's have some fun. Before I even turn on my sewing machine this morning, I'm going to sit down and take a look at this grid and figure out a game plan for my approach on sewing this quilt top together. Granted, there are probably a million different ways to piece all of this together, and I don't think that one way is more right than the other. I say, do what is easiest for you. <laughs> that is my approach to everything. The way that I like to do it is I like to take chunks of the quilt and sew them together to form larger blocks. That is easiest for me by piecing quilt blocks that are unique in the size and that all of their seams match up. For example, one person might start with this quilt by sewing all of these blocks together because all of the seams are the same width and they could sew this whole block together and join this section to the rest of the quilt later on down the road. Personally, I like to join blocks because we're going to have some partial seams in this quilt. Uh, if you remember, I showed you in the first part of this little mini series the partial seams that we're going to have. We're going to have some partial seams up in here too. So my approach to tackling the partial seams would be to actually form bigger blocks. I think to start and to begin with, I would probably start down in this corner. I see this red and yellow block, this black and white block. When sewn together, they form a larger quilt block. So that's an easy uh, construction there. Then I will probably come over and form this block together, which means we're going to be tackling this little small yellow partial seam. And I'm going to show you how I do that. Once we have this chunk and this chunk together, I like to uh, color in my pieces and I just use little crayons <laughs> and color in my blocks as I go. And I will show you as we move along today how doing it this way, you will see how the seams will go together when you have bigger chunks to work with. I'm going to go ahead and pull these pieces off the wall and we're going to sew this chunk together. And now I'm going to turn on my sewing machine, heat up my iron, and we'll get started. Before I start, let me just say, you might hear my squeaky floor. That noise is my floor. <laughs> so I apologize for any floor noise. I have the bottom section or the left hand corner here on my sewing table. The red and the yellow block, the black and the white block, just like I showed you on my quilting grid. I'm going to piece these two pieces together, those two pieces together, and then treat this much like a four patch block. Once these sections are together, I will join them and have one great big block. You could of course pin your sections together if you like using pins, I am a glue baster. If you watch any of my previous videos, you know that I like to use the school glue to do my pinning. <laughs> and uh, so I will go ahead and put these blocks together and bring them over to the sewing machine. I have a pin in my way. Let's move this. I have all my edges lined up perfectly. I have my iron set and we're just going to heat set and dry that glue.
we are ready to start sewing our two pieces together. This is the brand of thread that I'm going to be using today, the YLI Universal Thread. It is terrific for piecing and I love using this thread for quilting my t-shirt quilts. I hardly ever experience thread breakage with this, with this thread. And so it is one of my favorites and it is a huge large spool of thread which lasts me a long long time. So this is the thread I'm actually going to be using that I have in the bobbin and my top thread. I have my stitch length set to 2.5 and I have set a quarter inch seam allowance on my machine and we will piece these two blocks together. See how the glue keeps the two blocks together? I don't get any puckering or any shifting with the t-shirt material. going to chain piece which means I'm just bringing my next block over and starting that one immediately after the first one. Those blocks are together and we can separate them, take them to the iron and press our seams open. Now we have our two sets and we're ready to go ahead and press our seams. I like to set my seams or make sure that they lock in place. I achieve that by ironing the seams in opposite directions. So this seam will go towards the red block and this seam will go towards the white block. And what that does is when I join these two pieces together, these seams will sort of just fit perfectly and nestle with each other and give me a nice flatter corner in this midsection here. So again, we're going to press the seam to the red block on this one and into the white block on that seam. Let's move that out of the way. Pretty sure you hear the jet noise in the background. I'm pretty sure that it's going to go on through most of today, so you're going to hear that in the background. <laughs> I have my two seams pressed, and now we are ready to join these two blocks to these two blocks. And again, we're glue basting and then bringing it to the machine. I'm going to go ahead and do that, and we'll meet back when this block is together. We have our four pieces all joined together. You can see how nicely this intersection and all of our points meet. I'm really pleased with that. I have already colored in this block here. So this block represents these pieces here. We're ready to set this back up on the wall. And next we're going to tackle this section here. And we're going to learn about the partial seams. We have all five pieces 
that form this big chunk down in the right hand corner. This yellow block represented here is where our partial seams are going to take place. I'm going to try to explain this in the most least confusing way. <laughs> Sometimes I complicate things way more than they're supposed to be. Just looking at these pieces, you see that they're not going to be sewn together like a traditional seam. Most quilt seams, you start from one edge and you sew all the way completely to the end of the blocks. Because these are set the way that they are, we cannot achieve that, and so this is why it's called a partial seam. We're going to partially sew together two blocks and start our partial seam process. What I like to do is uh, make a seam that will fit completely here. So to do that, we will start with these two blocks here. I will turn this one here, and I will start sewing at this end, and I will sew about halfway through and do um, some back stitches here to lock those stitches in place. And this end will actually be open, just like that. However, when we press this, this seam here will be sewed together. What that does is create one continuous seam that allows us to join this block to this group of two. I hope that's not too confusing. <laughs> so let me go ahead and set up so that you can see me closely. I will glue base this and that just helps me. You don't have to do that. And I will sew this seam and let's get it started. I have my first two pieces at the machine. Remember this part of the little quilt block is going to stay open. We're going to sew halfway down and do some back stitches to lock everything in place. Right about there. Do some lock stitches. Bring the needle up. And we're ready to remove that from the machine. Just like that. So there is the beginning of our partial seam from the end, halfway through, back stitches. Again, this part will remain open as we work our way all the way around. We are back at the pressing board and we have our seam that needs to be pressed just like that and I will get my pressing cloth. We want to make sure not to touch the iron to any of our t-shirt design on our logos and I'll just press that really quick. And now you see we have a much longer seam that is exactly the same size as our pink block. So now we are ready to glue baste our pink block into place, just like that, and sew this seam from edge to edge. This will still remain open as we are working our way around the block. This seam has been sewn and pressed open, and now what we've done is created a completely even seam to join this bottom block, and this is where we are. We joined these two, and then joined the one on the right, and now we are ready to add this block here. You can see on the grid, it will go from the end of the yellow all the way to the end of the pink. So when we flip this, it'll be sewn just like that. 
I'll take care of that one. This seam is done and I have pressed it. Now we have a group of four blocks sewn together, all rotating around our center yellow block. This is where we are. Next we're ready to go ahead and add our final piece, which is this orange block. The orange block will go from the top of the yellow block all the way to the end of the quilt, the end of the black block. Remember how we left this open? That allows us to perfectly match up edge to edge these two blocks and we will sew a seam from this edge here all the way to the end of this black block and that will be our next to final seam for this chunk of quilt block. We're at the machine and I just want to show you this part starts getting a little awkward because you do have this bottom block just hanging <laughs> like that. So just make sure to keep that out of the way while you sew this seam edge to edge. because that is the bottom of the quilt. I'm going to go ahead and do some back stitches just to make sure that that stays together as I quilt everything and manipulate the whole quilt together. what I mean how it can be awkward I'm just gonna fold that out of the way and that seam is done our orange block has been pressed open we are ready for the last step in joining this group together the last step in our partial seam Remember, we started sewing this section together halfway through this yellow block right here. We took some uh, back stitches just to lock that in place. Now we can manipulate this seam and we're going to finish sewing, joining this block to this and half of our yellow block. I'm really hoping that that makes sense. <laughs> we're going to flip this back. And lining up our edges just like this, we will start sewing at the edge of this black and orange block and we will sew a seam and when we get to where we started sewing, we're going to take some more back stitches to lock that in place. I started sewing at the end of those two blocks and we are coming up to where we first initially started this whole process, the joining of the black and yellow blocks. You can see where we took our uh, back stitches there. We are going to sew beyond where we started a few stitches. And then again, we're going to do some back stitching to lock everything in place. And just like that, we're done. Let's press everything open. Congratulations, we have finished our first partial seam of this quilt. See how nicely everything just lays right in there when it's pressed open? And that is a partial seam. I've already colored in this block. I noticed that I didn't really use two contrasting colors to start blocking off my quilt. One is blue and one is black. But you get the idea. This uh, whole section here has been joined together and we're ready to move on to another part of the quilt. I think next I will tackle these four blocks here. This is a pink and blue, white and black block. 
you can see this will be much like this easier construction down here just a four patch an easy join I'm going to go ahead and sew this together and, and we will meet back we have our four patch piece together and everything is pressed I have colored this in green it does not show up very well on the camera this green block here is this piece here next we're going to move up to this section here I have a red piece a maroon piece and the black top right hand corner block first I will piece these two pieces together and then join to the right of it this black block and that will make a unit after this is together we're going to tackle this L shape here and join this unit with this L shape and this will give us a partial seam here so I'm going to go ahead and sew these together make this unit I will then sew this white block to this orange block and we will meet up at this point where we are going to tackle this seam here sewing machine I have not colored in anything yet because I would like to make all of this here one unit I sewed these two pieces together and then joined them to this black block so this is a unit I sewed these two pieces together there and that's a unit and then we have this block here which we need to contend with what I'd like to do like I said is make this all one unit that will give us a partial seam right in this corner here you can see that this white and orange block are longer than these two pieces here however the grid makes it easy to see that if I join this block here with this that will give me one continuous seam from the bottom of the orange block all the way up to the top of the quilt so I will start with this block here I will join it to these two pieces starting to sew from the edge I will come over and stop halfway through and do some locking stitches open that up and press it and that will give us a perfect seam right here to sew together and that will join all of this as one unit I'm going to go ahead and take care of that and we're going to meet back everything colored in orange is one unit now I just pieced all of those pieces together that's what's behind this I've indicated with a black circle this corner here again that is going to be our partial seam half of it is sewn to the seam here and half of it is still left open that's going to help us tomorrow when we join sections together this is the end of my work day I have to go pick up my kiddo but tomorrow's plan of attack we will probably get everything sewn together we still have this section here to sew together and we have this section here to sew together once this section here is sewn together I will piece it with our orange chunk <laughs> and then we will complete the seam between this section and the green section this will make one large piece so we are almost there we got a lot done today and uh, I would love to show you right here what the quilt looks like up on the wall all the different sections sort of separated and where we are with that if you have any questions feel free to ask them below if you are just joining us make sure you check out part one of this little mini series it's going to be just a short series we're just piecing together this quilt top together uh, feel free to join me over on Facebook I'll leave a link below in the description box if you've made a quilt like this I'd love to hear what your um, your story your quilt story you can leave your quilt story in the comment section below thank you all for watching have a great afternoon